Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Sorry for the time mix up on this. It's always tough to try to figure out the time zone difference, especially because like daylight saving times and then mm. some countries don't do it and all these things. So thank you for being flexible, everyone that's tuning in. And Jasmine, Heen, thank you for showing up. Oh, it's so wonderful to be with you. And I do apologize for the timing mix up too. It's all good. It happens. I've probably no. been a victim to it myself a number of times, so it's okay. It happens. Um, so I want to start by just asking about your your background, sort of your trajectory in life to get to the point of, you know, what you call source feeding and dark room meditation retreats that you take people through and all of those things. Wow. Where do I begin? <laughs> you know, I, I, believe in a continuation of energy because we are systems of energy so it's kind of like a massive book of an energy trail behind us lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes because for me it's you know energy cannot be created it cannot be destroyed it just changes form and that's the scientific explanation of reincarnation so i have great memory in simult in linear time although we operate in simultaneous of many embodiments as monks as shaman as yogi and so by the time i was really young three four five I was into very pure diet, rejected all meat, just naturally. And I just looked at the world and thought, this is a strange planet. <laughs> I'd like, you know, can we all live in harmony? Can we all live in peace? Because I had a very loving background. I chose good parents, big, noisy, crazy family. But I'd known a lot of that sort of love, but I just felt there was another type of love. And when your heart, is thirsty when your motivation is pure the unified field will answer your prayers will answer your heart call and so by the time i was 16 i met an indian yogi and he just taught me ancient techniques from the vedas that worked and the very first solo meditation i did i just I just exploded in this vibration of love, the purest, purest, most yumminess, oh, wordless love. And my third eye, light, 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 light. And for me, it was like, oh my God, that's who I am. I just knew it was a revelation of my true nature. And I wasn't a 16 year old girl. And I lost all interest in many things and I just wanted more and more and more because it was like, oh, I, uh, it, uh, wordless, wordless. And so that began a very conscious journey of listening to the Indian guru who gave advice to be a vegetarian, which I was already, um, to um, only use your voice to share words of truth, not gossip or anything based on experience and to meditate twice a day, if not 24 hours a day by um, using um, different techniques of the placement of the tongue. So you weren't talking, but you were stimulating the pituitary gland to produce more Amrita. And when the Amrita flows, it was like, oh my God, the best flavor ever. And that just put me on a path of wanting to really understand the magnificence of the human design because it's like wow i had no idea i could feel like that i had no idea that i could just disappear into this field of light and love and come back reformatted to the degree that i had no hunger on any level it was nice one thing that I think about is um, the various life paths that people take and the, the sort of uh, spectrum of on one side yogis or let's say monks who just go meditate in a cave for the rest of their life mm -hmm. and that's all that they do. Sort of, I don't think that they're disconnecting from life necessarily, but they're, but they're, they're not here in reality, right? And, and that's their path. And we need that. We need people that are on that path. And then 
the other end of the spectrum is just fully immersed in this experience, this seemingly mm -hmm. finite, seemingly limited experience that we're experiencing with seeming, um, uh, seeming to have differences in, in, in objects and variations, but it's really one being modulating in a number mm -hmm. of unique ways, right? So yeah. when you had this experience, what about you made you want to bring that back into reality rather than just meditating your life away and going, spending the rest of your life in a cave away from everyone else and things like that? Well, I tried. I really did. And I got rejected. You know, once I dropped, I was at university not too much longer and I left because I had this call. I just wanted to live in an ashram. And so I arrived in the city and I applied for the ashram and they rejected me. And it was like, what? <laughs> they just thought I was too young and I needed more worldly experience. And it was right too, because when I meditated on this later and, you know, during the years of meditation, you go into contemplation and what I call communion with the unified field and the intelligence of the all that is that vibrates through us and around us. You know, not only is there this frequency of love, but there's this frequency within the love of infinite intelligence and power. And when you sit with an open heart, you can begin communion and receive so much insight. And for me, I realized that I'd done the lives in yoga, as yogis in caves, and they're not inactive. They are vibrationally transmitting and influencing the global field, but not through the words, just Very through the point. beingness. And so that wasn't my path this life. I didn't realize, but my path was to get out and be public, which for me as like, I'm slightly spectrum. I, I'm what I call a divergent mind and I'm shy. I was never interested in a public path, but we have what I, I believe in my reality, um, pre-agreements that we set before we take each round of embodiment and so we agree on two things one what are the gift we are going to receive by being back in form on planet earth with billions of others because it's always about giving gifts and receiving gifts and then the number two is what gifts are we going to give in this embodiment? And somehow or other, I'd agree to um, step up, be in the public eye and um, bring the reality of source feeding as a futuristic science to the Western world in the early 1990s. And, you know, I was busy doing other things and really it was like the universe virtually kicked me um, into this job because it wasn't something I sought or was interested in or even being nourished in that way myself. But I've realized in time and looking and going back to that time in simultaneous time of life between lives, I've seen what I agreed to do, you know, and I with many, 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 many others because source feeding is a 6,000 year old or so tradition called um, Bigu by the Qigong masters in China, but it's different. Then it went to India and is was been there for with the yogis for thousands of years. And but it was always like you have to be very, very, very special to do this. And <laughs> yeah. it's like and there had to be this new reality of a simple little Western woman, mother, you know, career woman, because I used to be a computer programmer making rich people rich, which was very boring after a while. <laughs> but there, had to, there needed to be a simple person come up in a deep experience of this to say, hey, I'm just a simple person. If I can do this, you can do this. And this is how, as a futuristic science, which is all based on how we spend our time, because how we spend our time determines our frequency, which determines what we draw out from the unified mm. field as our reality. Mm. Long answer. No, that was great. You talk about, or you mentioned earlier, the, uh, the feeling of nourishment, the deep satisfaction and feeling of nourishment <sighs> that you felt and that you did not need to eat. So this may come as a surprise to people that are viewing this, 
could you describe exactly what source feeding is and that and that experience that you had, how that led you to sort of intuitively know that, you know, I, I am not required to eat meat or eat meat, eat anything at all, like eat anything whatsoever, because, um, a lot of us are caught up with like, what should we eat? And I think the more appropriate question within the context of this is, should we eat or do we need to eat? So yeah, I'll just turn it over to you for that. Look, I think the um, source feeding is, I, I've turned it source feeding because I want the words in there of feeding. And, you know, I've written 42 books that are in 20 languages and about seven or eight are dedicated to this subject. And there's this term breatharianism in the world, which I don't relate to and I don't like. When um, in the 90s, I met Wiley Brooks, who, who gave that term, he said it means a breather of God. We like to call it source feeding because it's about eliminating all human hunger so that you can hit a vibrational note or relax back into a an energy pool that is washing through us all that can feed us physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually so that we just feel so whole and so complete and we're at choice. And I think it's the choice of, of what, what is important in the world, not to say, hey, everybody should do this because it's not people's path this time around. Some people, they have many other gifts they're pursuing and transmitting in the world. And they may be in that frequency where they could do this, but they're not interested. It's just not part of their reality. But for us, it's like, if you look at it from a light being perspective, because I've dropped into a matrix, that matrix of love that's there, just to open and, and sit and breathe and be still and just be aware. And you just go into, I find you, you go into the field of love, which mm -hmm. is simple with the mantra of I am on the in-breath pure love on the out breath now that's a claiming a naming of of what we are at our core and it's a claiming of that so that part the pure love part of us can rise and the stronger it becomes and the more it rises the less hungry we are on all levels but in that is this wisdom and there is this wisdom that is multi-dimensional and it's intergalactic and there's beings of light that when you go into that field of love with no agenda and absolute surrender, those life forms, those flows of consciousness of the same frequency can match your field or you can match them. And then you have the most amazing network of friendship and information. So we have a multidimensional aspect to ourselves. And when we look at the experiment of one small drop of our consciousness that's inhabiting this human form, and when you tune to the prayers and the hearts of the human life wave, there's been so much searching. And so many questions like, can we live in peace? Can we um, eliminate the, the poverty issue, the starvation issue? Can we redistribute the resources in our world so that every man, woman and child is taken care of? And that's what I was consumed with when I was seven. <laughs> I just wow. looked at the world and I went, this is a strange planet. It just felt so unusual because in my previous linear time embodiment, I'd had sham, I was a shaman with the Lakota tribe. And we had a different relationship with animals. We had a different relationship with the earth. We had a different relationship in community with each other. So that was the frequency I came in with. So the Western world and systems of operation for me seem strange. And so you go into your heart, you watch, you observe, you use your intelligence, you ask and information comes. So source feeding in essence is about 
pumping up the purity and the power and the volume of your own pure essence nature so that it dominates your human bio system so that the reality of duality of illusion the matrix of illusion dissolves and you actually find yourself living in a zone that many have called heaven on earth that's my work if we can just find the formula which we've done and share a basic lifestyle formula one of many in the world that allows people a guaranteed um, stabilization in a zone that is the utopian we know exists because all the holy ones have always spoken of you know jesus said kingdom of heaven is within you mm -hmm. buddha talks of the pure land all the russia everyone has their own words for the pure land belvedere or others and so my focus was never about not eating my focus was being the best version me that i could be and exploring the magnificence of this human design and yeah i become addicted to divine love i just wanted more of it and i found when i meditated and i dropped back more into that and followed for 22 years what this indian guru said i just hit a frequency field where i was ready for merging with a different matrix because mm. I'd incorporated what he had to share. And so suddenly I came under the matricy of the ascended masters. And my whole focus was the ascension, personal ascension, global ascension, universal ascension. Mm. And that's the focus that I have. We are in a triple level ascension program right now on earth in my reality and in the reality of many others. And it's like, okay, how do we, when we're ready, when we're interested, just tick, tick, out of the dome of duality and its games of power and money and hunger and, and them and us and blame and victim and you know, judgment, which is interesting, but mm. a bit boring after a while. Can we just go dum, 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 and we're in unity consciousness and mm. we are vibrating in a way that brings out the best in each other? You know? I love that so much. And it's what, what you call ascension. I like to call unbecoming because I think mm -hmm. that this is the essence of who we are, that what you're describing and yeah. it's our human conditioning that has been layered. We have layers and layers upon an, um, of it upon us uh, on each of us over the course of our lives. And I think for those who begin to wake up, we start realizing the amount of conditioning that we have. And then it's sort of this unbecoming process of dissolving those layers of conditioning to get back to the essence of who and what we are. Yeah. And it, you know, to me, it's about dominance. I always share it in terms of you can have human ego personality dominate your life or you can have pure essence already enlightened ascended self which is there dominate your life play and find the difference and feel the difference and choose mm -hmm. and many people have been playing in the ego dominated duality matricy which is a huge illusion mm -hmm. for a long time and they find it so unfulfilling you know sometimes it's mesmerizing and it's exciting the drama and then for others sometimes it's like oh it's just so boring i feel like i've been playing there forever what else is mm -hmm. there and as soon as the human heart goes i'm ready for something else i'm ready for an upgrade can i upgrade this whole system of operation can i upgrade all my relationships can i upgrade um, my reality of, of earth can i um drop back into allow pure nature to really deliver all its gifts all its love all its power all its wisdom i'm ready i'm open and to this i just say yes 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 make this my experiential truth when you wow. do that from the heart it's like the whole unified field goes yeah here's another one that's ready and along mm. the way you will find as essence dominates your system you just lose every human hunger naturally organically mm. you talked about these 
these beings that that you've encountered and mm. other people who have done your dark room meditation retreats have also encountered them so i want to get to that but prior to getting there how did you come across the power of dark room meditation and what went into incorporating that into what you do you know it's so interesting because there's um, a beautiful place called Tao garden in thailand and i was sitting in meditation and i just kept getting the name go to Tao garden go to Tao garden and other people had dropped in around the same time and said have you heard of Tao garden this universal communication you know mm -hmm. i call it the inner inner net and you'll get an internet email on some, <laughs> yeah the internet and you'll get an email from someone or someone will give you a book yeah. or someone will drop a name and or you'll get it maybe yourself it's like the three three signals yeah and so somebody somebody had said to me oh there's this great retreat opened and you know i've just been there it's amazing and so i thought okay follow the guidance and i i'll go and i went and i loved the facility it was very new and i started to bring groups there for our embassy of peace and they were outside and when i was there i spent some time with master chia who is the taoist master many of you know and he just said to me hey come to my dark room i think you'll like it and i did and i saw the potential of it the way he was doing it at the time was interesting like food was coming in it was smelly there was meat and veg people and it was noisy like the subway station with people yelling and or whatever and i was just sitting there going if i did a retreat like this i'd do it like this i no food i'd give them juice this is a great I'd, starting point but here i yeah, could we could do this a yeah, little bit better yeah yeah and, yeah and i'd make them be quiet and we'd do meditations and we'd had music music is so important and so this voice just yelled at me in my head and said well why don't you and i was like oh okay ding so i talked to master cheer and he said great and i said you've got to be aware i'm extreme and I'm going to bring very extreme people. And this is what we plan to do. Are you okay with this? And he said, let's see the experimentation. And so when we started over 20 years ago, we then started to take blood work, do aura scans, do Kirillin photography. We did a full physical checkup before they went in and when they came out, because I wanted to prove the differential on the health physical, emotional, mental health of people from before they went into when they came out to prove what we were doing worked. Mm -hmm. And we did, and we have so much data and we've got 20 years of so many people coming in and doing it our way. But what's beautiful is about the frequency you hit. I remember being in a, in, in a situation once and I was meditating and I tuned into those Christed energies who said, when two, or more, when two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there. Mm. And the power of a group gathering. So let's say you get a powerful group of long-term meditators, generally. 95% of people who come are ready for this. Mm -hmm. Most of them, nearly all of them are vegan, if not raw foodists. They're ready for source feeding. They're interested. I get very few curious because it's a tough initiation. They're, they love meditation. They're very now moment friendly. In other words, they know or we teach them how to transcend time because when you can transcend time and you can move beyond this physical structure like to be able to remote view to be able to bilocate to be able to visit family like i always go visit my family when i'm in dark room just to check on grandkids and how everyone's doing because it's your body is a speck within the vast consciousness that you are mm. so it, travel is just a matter of thought and intention so the darkroom retreat is amazing because you hit a frequency field where um, you, the groups start to operate what I call as one heart, one mind. Mm -hmm. Now, that means people know exactly what I'm going to say before I say it, because we go into a unified field and the quickest way 
to unify a group of people who come from all different walks of life is to focus on that which is at our core. Three things. I am pure love. I am infinite. I am eternal. So when you get a group focused in meditation on those attributes, that part rises and dominates the experience. And then before you know it, all these light beings who are vibrating in the same frequency signature start popping in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow. I mean, all of this is a science. It's not new age higgledy piggledy, which some people like to think. You know, I am an interdimensional energy field scientist. I live backwards in time. You know, I have bought, I am working with this soul, Jasmine. I did a future self merge in the 90s. I'm working with bringing in all the highlight science around the ABC of how this is possible. Not just source feeding, but eliminating people's hungers because all mm. the chaos in our world is to do with hungry people. They are hungry mentally. They are hungry emotionally. They feel they lack in some, to some degree. Somewhere they feel too, lack. Too much identification with ego, personality, self, and not enough resting in identification with dominance of their own pure, perfect nature. Mm. One of the things that um, Dr. Edith, who I know you know, and um, I think I've brought her up, probably a hundred times on various podcast episodes because I just love her so much. She did a darker meditation retreat with you mm -hmm. and she described an experience of being able to see the energetic signature of various objects in the room because mm -hmm. so from my understanding, the dark room meditation is truly that there's no source of light inside mm -hmm. the room. And Dr. Edith described being able to see the aura of objects mm. and then what mm. she realized and i'm probably butchering this so if you listen to this dr edith please <laughs> forgive me but she described essentially that energy was primary rather than like mm. like physical mm. reality it was the energy of mm. objects and other beings and of herself that was primary can you touch on that a little bit yeah look i love it because um you know, I, I have a lot of people in our gatherings like myself who've had strong shaman training and backgrounds, and they've dealt with ayahuasca and the sacred power plants. And one of the things it does is um, trigger or stimulate or align more of the DMT in the brain. And we know that the pineal gland produces pineal, but it also produces DMT and the pituitary gland produces amarita. Now, when these glands, the master glands, are stimulated to amp up their production of this, you harmonize left and right brain hemispheres. And by shutting off the physical intake of food, you've got all this energy because you're being source fed. You've got all this energy you're not using in digestion to use in other ways. Then by getting rid of all external eye stimulation, putting your little iPhones, most people give me their iPhones when they come into dark room because they want to do a full detox. There's no light, so dark. And it's so interesting because it takes about three days. Then you start to see pinpricks of light everywhere, like you're looking in, in a cosmic sky of billions of stars. And then other things start to happen. Some people they can look around the room and they see the auric field of everybody. For me, sometimes I go straight into having like a cosmic spotlight over my shoulder and it shows me everybody's mats and it shows me my bed and it shows me inanimate objects, but it doesn't show me people. Why don't I get to see people's energy fields, but others do? It's so interesting. And so sometimes the light, the inner light, the cosmic particle light is so bright. I just say to my guys, turn it down with you. I want to be in darkness. <laughs> but it's look, it's fascinating because everybody is so unique. 
and everybody comes in with a unique energy signature and we only have nine days and nights to really get people into that unified field frequency and many people have to overcome a lot some people will go i'm so bored i've never been so bored in my life what am i doing here i'm hungry <laughs> I miss my family and we work with them obviously because they're open and they're honest and slowly over time they will settle because the first thing is we have to make friends with the now moment mm -hmm. we, we need to learn to mani manipulate control time by going into timelessness and we do that with the meditation sessions we have with people we do that with the stories we share you know as a channel the the light beings will always bring through stories that are so relevant to many in the group and i've learned to trust that you know and it lets people let go let go surrender and you know sometimes they just sit there and they scan their life and they go into this whole retrospectivity and they look at where they've spent time and energy and they decide i'm not going to do that anymore mm. like i had a very very rich chinese businessman who's a meditator come in and he was really confronted by how much time he gave to making money and business and he realized why I don't need to make money. I'm rich. What I need to do is love my wife. Mm. My poor wife has been supporting me for years. My children are grown. I don't even know my grandchildren. I am going to stop all that and I'm going to make family my number one priority. And that was huge for him. And no, he didn't lock permanently into source feeding and there was probably other gifts, but this was the main gift of sitting down, being still, going through the exercises we share and opening up to step into the next level that's perfect for you. And that's all we need to drop into, to step into the next level that is perfect for each one of us. That's beautiful. I'd imagine that um, for some people being in darkness for that amount of time, having to sit with their thoughts in the present moment, they're really reflecting on a lot of their traumas that they experience too. Um, mm. Can you, can, can you touch do. on those experiences? Yeah. I think, you know, because I'm old, <laughs> like my next big birthday is 70. So wow. Um, yeah. Happy early birthday. <laughs> years yet I'm <laughs> <headed> that way <laughs> i'm ignoring the other birthdays i'll got celebrate it, those it. but um you know because i'm being married for you know with my man for since 1982 we met so i've had a long-term relationship we've had children they've got partners we have grandchildren it's very relatable and as a woman doing the things i do which is also a very um, I'm a yogini. What can I say? My true nature is an ascetic. Um, you know, to me, it's about this life having it all and being all of that, living like you said in the world. No caves this time, no ashrams yeah. this yeah. time. You fully know, immersed. being yeah. fully immersed and yeah. learning. And I've learned a lot the hard way, as many of us do. But because of that, I get very different people in my retreats. Like mm. I've had a lot of young women who've been abused sexually mm. through childhood. They've never slept with the light on, mm. off, you know, they've yeah. always slept with the light on. They, I've had people come who will never stay home alone. They're frightened. I've had a lot of badly emotionally wounded, damaged young girls who have been sexually misused. I've had women come in who've been uh, misused through cults and who've been abused mm. since children, whose fathers abuse them, uncles abuse them, who want a, a good, healthy life, a good relationship. And we go into deep connectivity in my room personally. You know, I do a lot of work behind the scenes with them, but there are many people like that and others who come in who are afraid of the dark and they're there to overcome fears. Mm. So one of the first things we share with people is I want you to 
should let your imagination go and think of the worst thing that can happen, step into that idea of what is the worst that can happen and then see if you can handle it. And you realize you can. You know, what's going to happen? Somebody could come in here and abuse you. Well, that's not going to happen because it's a safe compound. But let yourself go with that. But go into the I am pure love. Sit in your ascended self. Allow that being, that experience to come back to you. And then use some neuro-linguistic programming and reset the scene and free yourself from the influence of it. And particularly go through the forgiveness. So we'll often go through a deep forgiveness routine. There we'll also, we have some beautiful tribal music where we do a lot of chanting and the drumming and the journey to of didgeridoos to really blast stuck energy out of people's fields. Mm-hmm. All of this is important. So we don't just sit and meditate. We don't just sit and reflect. We also dance. And getting these guys up and dancing is just fabulous because it makes them sleep better too. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's like somatics. It's getting getting that trauma, getting that energy out of your body. Yeah. 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 And we have sessions where the music we play is just designed to let everything rise and cry your little eyes out. Let the tears flow. Don't resist. Don't analyze. Your body's just doing a release. But again, every group is so different. But you can see probably from how I share this, it's my favorite thing to do. I just adore dark room. And we have all these repeaters who come back and back and back and back because it's a reset. And we're starting again in two weeks. Yay. You know, we have a March retreat, two March retreats. And I love it. I love it. I need it. (laughs) It's so good for me. And it's good to play with like-minded people so intensely in this way because everyone comes in with their vibratory note adding to the field Mm. i bet there's like such an amazing synchronistic effect that happens as you mentioned and i that's so amazing do you have have you had any experience where uh you know one person claims that they saw being and then a bunch of other people corroborate that Mm. who also experienced the darker they all saw the exact same being yeah yeah, wow. when we do share, sharings after a meditation, we know we're in the one heart, one mind because we're all talking about the same thing. Everybody saw what I see because as a, a visionary um, guide, you could say, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, I see a vision, I mm-hmm. feel the energy, I'm telepathic, as we all are, we mm-hmm. all are. Um, you know, when I get into that and I'm describing in the path where we're going in a meditation, others are often there before me. And then later they say, oh, I knew you were going to say that. I saw that too. (laughs) And we get up to 60% of people doing that. Now, I think that's great stats. 60%, 40% maybe zone out. Others may go, I don't get into this meditation at all. I'm not. Or others will be on the floor. That's fine. That's amazing though, because then there's the different levels of awareness and, and mm. it's it's all ever present, always there. And it's yeah. it's cool that mm. people become almost like a vibratory match with each mm. other and with these beings yes. that appear. And that's yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. It's sympathetic resonance like guitars when you pluck a string and you get the vibrate and the vibration of the others playing too. Um, I just love to set up a field of sympathetic resonance and by, and it's like, well, what are you going to be resonant to? You can be resonant to fear. You can be resonant to the whole pandemic. You can be resonant to judgment. You can be resonant to, you know, lots of things I like for me, my, my focus and my mantra and my coding is that, um, Everything about my frequency field enhances all sentient life. And I am enhanced by the frequency fields of all sentient life. Mm -hmm. I exist in mutually beneficial relationship with all life through all kingdoms, through all realms. Yes, yes, yes. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And when your heart spontaneously goes, yes, 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 because it should be spontaneous. This isn't to analyze. 
It's like, oh, yeah, I get that. Yes, I feel like that. And then the universe goes, yay, there's another one locking into that frequency or interested. And what is the what is the prep like for this dark room? I, I remember Dr. Edith described mm. there was a few days that you did some meditative techniques and practices yeah. outside of the dark room. And then how long was that? What does that process look like? And then how long mm. are you actually in the dark room? Well, when people contact us, um, my assistant Angie does all of this. We like to begin contact a couple of months before and we start to send regular updates. Like we really like you to start to lighten up your diet. So by mm. the time you come, you are physically detoxed. Some people arrive a few days earlier to go through heavy detox programs at the clinics there as well. But we'd love you to have a clean liver. We'd love you to have a, a, a no physical toxicity because otherwise you come into dark room and you're doing a detox and yeah. you're smelling and it's not fun for those around you. And, yeah. you know, come in clean. But most of our people already are. And then we will work with you for the emotional detox and the mental detox as well wow. through the process. So it's like getting yourself ready by getting your stomach shrunk because you're not going to be physically fed there. You're going to be pranically fed and you need, it takes three days for the stomach to shrink depending on how much you've been eating. So the people I have difficulty with has been sometimes the rich businessmen from China who've been busy attending lunches and they just go, oh, I'm going to go to dark room. And they go through massive changes that are very, very uncomfortable because yeah. they didn't take prep time. I don't believe in suffering. I think to pay money and to come and join us in dark room and to suffer for nine days and nine nights or half the time is a waste of your money and a waste of your time. So get ready. So we encourage that if people haven't been, aren't familiar with Qigong, Tai Chi or yoga, that they get familiar with one of those routines because we want you every day to do stretching, to do some sort of yoga, Qigong, Tai Chi, movement practice even though we also offer dancing for people to get their bodies you know well exercised while they're there so obviously applying common sense but we share we send out information for all our participants about things we recommend that they do and so people often come in a few days before to get ready and then when we start on the evening we come out later and we want people we have nine days, nine nights, and when we come out, we want people to stay another day or so to just integrate from that frequency field back into light. And this is fabulous. You know, we let them out and they come out at about sunset and everyone's walking out going, oh, I didn't know. It was so beautiful. The colors are so bright that look wow. at the, they're all like children. Look at the flowers. Look at the sky. Smell the air. Look at the, oh, oh it's so beautiful. <laughs> well, it's amazing because I, I really feel like that is then putting you back into just being in love with life in the present moment right now. And what we tend to think are just mundane things, but really are quite beautiful. But because we've lost that touch with our inner self, we forget how beautiful they are. You come out and you see the world with different eyes. Again, depending on how we set the field, like the way we set the field in our dark rooms is very different to what Master Chia does and to what many people do. Um, and the extremes we go to like source feeding, you know, we really do a lot of, we have morning breakfast in energy, you know, yeah, we have yeah. lunch with energy. So yeah. we're consciously feeding the system. And um, so it's very, very different, but it is a massive recalibration of all realities for many. It's a massive reset. It's a massive um, letting go for some. It's a massive recommitment or it's a, a time of massive coding into the quantum field and the unified field. So it begins to respond to us differently mm. because we determine reality 
by what we're giving our mental, emotional, and physical energy to, but particularly Mm -hmm. the mental. Like how bad if we let go of this whole, oh, it's impossible to be source fed and just say, if this is a reality of potential for me, this life, then I'm asking that I be aligned to the channel where this can happen joyously with ease and grace in the healthiest way for me. And I ask that it happen in the right way and the right time for me, if this is for me, this life. And to Mm. this, I say, yes, yes, yes. And you're like recognizing a potential within the quantum field Maybe it's not for you. Maybe you wouldn't say what I just said. But what if it could be a very natural, organic transition that you agreed to physically um, enjoy this life in this embodiment before you took form? Maybe you are one of those. Mm. Like we have, we have five hundred thousand, over half a million people in training for this right now. We have over two hundred thousand people who have this gift and have lived it experientially and know it's a truth for them. Mm. This isn't just one crazy woman <laughs> claiming something. This is many people who have been pre-encoded this life to demonstrate. Um, free energy access that we have within us that can free us from so much human suffering. What's beautiful about that is you're you're really just setting the example of what's what human beings are actually capable of. And I always go back to I I, I keep this on my desk. This is a, a spoon that I <laughs> that I bent, which is still just mind blowing for me to say. Two and a half years ago, <laughs> I took a qigong spoon bending class with Dr. Edith, and mm. I think there was sixteen of us in that class, and twelve of us were able to bend spoons just after four yeah. weeks. And yeah. all of us came in having meditated or practiced qigong to varying degrees. Like there is, I had never done qigong before that. Mm. And there were some people who had been, had quite an experience with qigong prior to that. Some that were avid meditators before that. But what it showed me is that we are all capable of doing these things. So Mm. had I heard your story five years ago, I would have said, absolutely not. There's no way, no way that human beings can do this. But (laughs) After yeah. having that experience myself, it, it really showed me that we really are all capable of these things. What is inhibiting us from being able to do this is our own false beliefs and conditioning surrounding it. Mm. Limited educational patterns. You know, like imagine being taught a successful lifestyle program at school that would guarantee that you could live in health and harmony within yourself and with all of creation. Where's that taught? It's not. What about if we just say ourselves in silence, I am ready to experience the magnificence of this human design. Show me who I really am. You know, that, this is, we're talking about a heartfelt communication with an infinite intelligence, an aspect of which I am totally addicted to. Mm. Okay, here we've talked about love. Here we've talked about wisdom, that frequency that is vibrating through us. Because remember, we are 99.9999% space in an atom. We're not really much solid matter at all. So for me, because I've been meditating now for 50 years, so I go through phases of experimentation and interest. Mm -hmm. So I decided a few years ago that I wanted to experience the vibrational signature of the 99.9% space that was in my atomic structure. It's not space, it's a vibrational signature set. And so first I went into the love when I was 16. Then I started to tap this endless wisdom that changed my life. You know, didn't need to prove anything to anyone. I listened, I applied, my life got better. And then I got into this feeling, this revelation of benevolence. There is this benevolence that's part of this wisdom love spectrum that longs for you to know your true nature, 
that will deliver to your door anything that is for the highest good of you and the highest good of the human life waves evolutionary path so if you set an intention to discover ways of being that is a triple win reality that is for your highest good the highest good of humanity and the highest good of gaia as a conscious beingness in which we dwell because she's mother she's given us elements for body when mm. you set the intention to operate in a triple win reality this benevolence delivers the most amazing realities to you and solutions for all challenges in life and then you end up with one prayer not about asking for anything but just by saying thank you thank you thank you thank you i'm so grateful and you live in a state of perpetual gratitude mm. and and awe and synchronicity because what people what i understood very young was grace there is an energy that the benevolence offers that you call synchronicity that I experience and call grace and to operate your life on earth in a state of grace as Franz Kafka, Kafka said you can sit in your kitchen doing nothing and the universe will roll in ecstasy at your feet and when I heard that I went yep that's what I want and then it was like well how do you make it happen it's like go into the field of love and when you are vibing in the field of the purest love and that's what you're having washed through you recognizing wash through you transmit through you so you're just opening to be a radiation channel not an absorption channel mm. and this love just vibrates out through you then the grace that comes back to you the synchronicity the the all the wonder the experience you have as a human being regarding life on earth is like i love this planet i love this people and you have nothing nothing but absolute love for every human being because you also understand that they are your own pure essence nature choosing to vibrate in a slightly different form how could you judge them mm. why would you judge your essence expressing my essence expressing as you having an experience of Alec, having an experience of every single human being in the world. How can I judge when I know it's just my essence breathing them? Their essence is breathing me. We are in that one connected state and we can just look for the good in all and look for the God in all and train ourselves to focus on that and see what will be revealed. No, it's, it's sort of what, what, what Christ said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, I've said that before regarding everything that's happened the last mm. three years with all, all of the nonsense that's happened. And I sort of yeah. have come to understand that when people commit acts that we perceive as evil, as evil acts, right? Mm. It's, mm. It's, it's because that they are still to varying degrees succumbing to the conditioning and the belief that the, the false belief that we are separate from each other, that we are mm. limited, that we are lacking. Could you, could you touch on that? Yes. Look, it's just lack of holistic education. That's why I love Edith's work and all the wonderful people in the world who are dedicated to holistic education. Mm. Because to be educated holistically is to understand experientially the magnificence of this human design yeah. like i love i studied for a while spontaneous healing and it was like what is stimulating spontaneous healing and it was interesting because there's some things in commonality because you'll find on my website we have courses online courses and one of them is a course on health and healing one on source feeding lifestyle they're all there contact you know things like this uh, and when you look at spontaneous healing people are told okay you're terminal you've only got this amount of time to live and they go through different things but at some point they go you know what i'm going to stop worrying about other people i'm just going to do what makes my heart sing 
Time's precious. I'm not going to live in the past. I'm not going to live in the future. I'm going to fully enjoy this moment. And by now moment awareness, which is the realm of essence, essence gets stronger and healing happens. They also say, I'm just going to follow my passion. I'm going to follow my joy. We follow our passion. We follow our joy. We're in absolute alignment with our pure essence nature. So here's two things that allow essence to rise, essence to dominate, and that's why spontaneous healing can happen. But also it's not their time to die because many people have, uh, they're at their end of contract. Mm -hmm. So this mass exit that we had in the 2004 tsunami, we had over 200,000 souls leaving closely together and that stimulated massive waves of compassion in the world. We mm. had a, a huge Turkey um, earthquake recently, again, stimulating care, concern, unity, support, compassion. All of this is fueling the ascension process. Mm. You know, So what appears to be catastrophe is often a higher soul game as a contract to exit time or to stimulate, like you'll get a soul coming in who appears to be evil, but when you look at their imprint in history, they've stimulated humanity to rise and say, no, that's not okay. We will not live like that. Yep. So they're doing an incredible service. You yeah. Know? Because it's... you look at, well, you look at the American political system and the Australians, so apathetic. Mm -hmm. In your country, in my country, we have to vote. But it's like, yeah, the systems are okay. Well, now the systems are not that okay. No. Because you have had for decades now, since the end of 2012, all our groups started to call in consciously an upgrading of every system in our world so they operate for the highest good of all. Which We've is why this system and, seems to be crumbling, which right? Which is drrrr, because... Yep. We're ascending. So we ask for an upgrade of political systems in the world. We ask for an upgrade of medical systems, health systems, education systems, economic systems. Now, when enough people, like you think of the harmonic convergence in 1987, it changed my life big time and I wasn't part of it. I didn't join in, but you had people all around the world meditating for an up-leveling of our world into a deeper level of peace. That heartfelt prayer stimulates a release from the quantum unified field to go, ah, oh, you're ready for that now. Are you on earth? Okay, bring well, it. Well, it's actually to measurable me. too. I, I forget it's exactly measurable. where it was done. Yeah. But uh, I, Chicago, I forget exactly. Maharishi. Yeah, Chicago. Yes, this is what it Maharishi. was. Yeah. Where, where, yeah. where, where a group meditated uh, for peace in a specific area in Chicago. And yeah. then that area in Chicago experienced violence. a drast yeah, drastic yeah. decrease in crime and violence. I know. And see, it's like Masuro Moto's work. I love him. Like he had people standing around polluted lakes and just projecting from their heart into the water. I love you. 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 And it changed and reset the pollution levels in the lake. And you think this is what I've come to understand with source feeding. If we, our brain is 80% water and the body is, you know, majority of water, what happens when you give yourself breakfast every day by just being as the essence you are in form and every day, five minutes, just as essence saying to your temple body, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, body, I love you, I love you, I love you, body, you are so precious, body consciousness, you are so magnificent, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, body consciousness, feed yourself in whatever way is for your highest good, feed yourself from physical food if that's what you enjoy, or go to source, Feed yourself directly from the source energy that's flowing through the atoms like wind through a tunnel. Take from source energy whatever you need, vitamins, minerals, to be strong, fit, healthy. Body, I love you. Feed yourself in a way that's right for you. But body, just know I, the master I am, is essence within you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And you recalibrate the water, the blood, the lymph, every part of you. 
Ah, free. How interesting. No religious dogma. No mental analysis. Just a simple, loving recognition that you as an essence being that is in this form on earth right now have endless love to give this form and each other and to just say, body, I love you, I love you. Human life wave, human life wave. See, eight billion people around you. Human life wave, brothers, sisters on earth. I as an essence being, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Take this love. Take it and use it in a way that you need that's for your highest good. I love you. Mm. Five minutes every day. One to you, two to the world. How simple. Imagine if See everyone what? did that. That made me cry, by the way. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I yes. was just thinking like, imagine yes. if everyone did that every day. I know. Look, I've been doing a lot of work in China where this, you know, whole pandemic stuff. And I was going in for years. I spent nine years in Russia and the Eastern Bloc countries. I've spent probably about seven, eight years with, with Chinese physically there. And we would have the audience do this and they would be, they just go into tears because they were studying 33,000 sutras of Buddha trying to be better people this is meditating chinese and it was like trying to be compassionate trying to be this trying to be that and if you can just go into the field of love that is a vibrational frequency inside of you washing through you it's either powerful and pure or it's weak because we've polluted it with too much focus on external man-made reality so it's just there keeping you alive but it's not dominant so if you can go into this, I am pure love, I am infinite, I am eternal and body, I love you. I am an enlightened essence beingness in this form and I love you body and I love my brothers and sisters in the world. If you can do this for five minutes, the veils of illusion drop around you and you find yourself living in Buddha consciousness, living in Christed consciousness living in the experience of what all the holy ones have shared for thousands of years. Mm. But that's just the game I like to play. <laughs> well, it's a game that's really important because, it, it, you know, I've said this like a number of times is that all the things that have happened the last two and a half to three years, we have consented to. Like we, we mm. are the ones that are continuing mm. to choose those things. And if we can align with what you're describing, Jasmine, individually, and then more importantly, collectively, we quite mm. literally can change this world. We can change mm. everything mm. around us. Can I share a story? I yes, like please. Stories. Yeah, please share. <laughs> you know, when I, my body, when I was bought in, I vibrated into this matrix of the ascended masters and their gift was about source feeding about the ascension reality and taking away human hunger because a lot of people were interested all sorts of people and i moved into a new group and there was this one woman in the group and her imprinting was very different to mine i had a father who said follow your intelligence and do your own research and make your own choices and you know if i feel you're a bit out of line i'll talk about it with you but go and the girl i had in the group was catholic she'd had a strong catholic upbringing and she was very doom and gloom all fear and all of this and we'd have these weekly meetings and I found it really hard because I was tuning into these energies from the field of love that were so uplifting and so inspiring and so positive in their outlook. And I was confronted in a group with this really doom and gloom person. And so I asked before I went into a meeting for an explanation to see the higher picture around this woman. And it was so beautiful what I was shown. I saw, I went into a vision and I saw a football field, you know, like a big gridiron field, yep. massive, and it was filled with spectators. 
And there was a team wearing black jerseys and a team wearing white jerseys. And the audience were like, yay, go white guys. No, go, the black guys are good the ball. Woo, woo, woo. And we were watching and feeding. And I was standing there getting really bored. It was like, yeah, ho-hum, I've done this in many other lives. Not, I wasn't thinking this, but I was just a bit bored with it all. It's like, whatever. And I felt the warmth behind me. And I turned around and I saw a sunset. And I was just like, football field of fear and yelling and noise and chaos. Rah, and more light, more love. No, the darkness is winning. No, the light's winning. You know, that game. And I just thought, I'm done. And I just allowed myself to be mesmerized by the sunset. And this girl was standing beside me in the vision. And she kept tapping me on the shoulder going, Jazz, watch the game. Watch the game. Watch the game. And I'd go, no, no, watch the sunset. Watch the sunset. And after a while, the energy of beauty was so overwhelming that I just found myself magnetically walking towards it. And I noticed others had seen the same thing and they turned their back to the game and they were walking off the field with me. And we were a whole group until the football players had no one watching and they went, this is boring. Nobody's feeding us. Nobody's watching us. Where's the Yahoo? And they started to walk off the field. And the moral was be a living example. Be careful of what you give your energy to because whatever oh. you focus on will become dominant in this world. And if every zone of operation is here for you to step into, what zone do you want to live in? Mm. That's all. And it's not to change duality because duality serves a purpose. It teaches us, it gives us so many gifts of mastery. But after a while, it's like, know what is available to you and choose your system of operation. Mm. Now, source feeding is a fact. We have thousands of people tuning to this and loving it. Now, I have people who eat once a month because they love it. I have people wow. who take physical food once a week with family because it's fun. It's not about, you know, it's just knowing the field of possibility is there yeah. for you and experientially exploring it if you're interested when you're ready and feeling the benefits, but the greatest benefit comes when you can just sit still, shut up, disengage from the illusion of duality and ask to experience the magnificence of your own design and ask to remember the gifts that you were born to give this world and to remember the gifts this world was here to give you this incarnation and to set that commitment to operate in a way that's for the highest good of all sentient life. Now, then a new game kicks in and it's fun. Well, it's it's beautiful having that lens of, of duality lifted off your eyes for a period of time in deep meditation or in a darkroom experience like you're describing because then you can bring that into this experience in seemingly finite, separate, limited, lacking mm. beings and have a more complete understanding of how to live fully within it. But it sets up a screening mechanism. See, when you change your vibratory signature, you screen out everything that doesn't match and attract to you everything that does match. So you can be a person living on planet Earth, but having a very different experience of Earth, because my light being friends say there's a million different versions of you and a million different versions of Earth. But mm -hmm. what's happening now over the last few years is those million versions have coalesced to five. There's mm -hmm. five major planet Earths now. Now they're all overlaid vibrationally. So you have Earth that's a bit still in the dark ages where people are really buying into the fear, separation, judgment, them and us game. That is dark age mentality. You have people who have now picked up meditation, picked up yoga, lightened up their diet, um, have been experience, experimenting with their own body and they're anchored more in the alpha brainwave pattern because you can correlate it to brainwaves. And so they're more at peace. They have more grace, maybe not 
permanently. They can go in and out of both worlds. They're not stable. And then you have another version of Earth where people are more anchored in a theta brainwave pattern. Now, a theta brainwave pattern changes the way the unified field responds to you and your experience of reality. Mm. And then you have another. So you also have a fully enlightened version of Earth that is in deep unity consciousness where our life being friends come and go freely, where they're meeting with us in meditation, where we're connecting with the inner earth civilization because we're frequency matched and stabilized in that version of earth. But because. Oh no. Okay. Hopefully she can hop back on. This is amazing. While we're waiting for her to hopefully come back on, does anyone have any questions for Jasmine? And it's interesting what I was going to say in response to her talking about the football field thing. I've said this a number of times. I don't know if I've said it on a podcast I appeared on or I've said it on this show in response to someone else. Um, but I've been using this analogy discussing there she is. Okay. I was just yeah. sharing with the audience while you dropped off real quick that it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting. You brought up the, the football field analogy that you use with a black team and a white team. And you just turned mm -hmm. around and looked at the sunset. It's interesting because I've used a similar analogy um, that I first saw on Facebook and I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's, it's a perfect <laughs> analogy to describe what you were talking about. I know that there's a circus in town. And in fact, I used to attend the circus <laughs> and mm. I used to buy tickets to it, but mm. I'm not buying tickets to the circus anymore yeah. because I know what goes on inside the circus and it's not to my benefit. It's not helping me with this experience. So I've stopped giving it my energy. I've stopped buying tickets mm. to it. And the moment yeah. that other people stop buying tickets to the circus as well, the circus will leave town. Yeah. And well, we so- just we just move out of the zone. The circus can go on as much as it likes. It's just games, but we don't have to participate. Yeah. And, and with that, I've, I've discussed this with so many of my friends, this balance between being aware of what is in reality right now, the reality mm -hmm. as it presently is with all of the dark things that are happening, but then focusing our energy on what we want to create. How do we balance that out? Being aware of what is, because I look at it like mm. if we are completely unaware of the dark things that are happening, then that could be a form of spiritual bypass. So how do we balance that knowledge and understanding of the dark things that are happening, but still be in inner alignment and focusing on bringing about the reality that we want? Okay. You know, when the pandemic first came and uh, everything stopped and I wasn't on the road anymore, I'd had 30 years of traveling six months every year, living in hotel rooms. And when it first came and I couldn't travel, part of me was like, yay, time off from the road, time away from flying in hotels. And, uh, you know, I, I had to go through a lot of mental adjustments of being out there and being active in the world, educating, etc. And spirit just said to me, you need to know that the mere fact that you're alive and vibrating is influencing the field. Then the question goes is how do you want to influence the field? Because the more you share realities that perpetuate separation and fear and revelation, yes, so what? There's dark forces. That's a game of duality been happening for thousands and thousands of years but that's not what uplifts people what uplifts them is for you to anchor in a vibratory signature that nourishes them into freedom so your job my job to me is if i can drop into the field of peace if i can drop into the field of virtues if i can drop into the field of love if i can go into making that my dominant signature then everywhere i go in the world i am influencing the field without dogma without words without judgment mm. we're talking about fertilization 
fertilization comes from being a living example and not a player in the game of separation. We don't need to educate people about the dark forces. We just have to know that that's a game that goes on. It's been going on thousands of years. There's even intergalactic warfare going on. Like when you look at beings of light, there's three types in, you, in our ET friends, right? Because one of our courses is on contact. And what I had to differentiate as a telepath, because I began to hear strong voices very, very young that saved my life actually on occasions. And I needed to understand one, that I wasn't schizophrenic and two, you know, who is speaking to me? So you always ask, oh, okay, hello, you've come into my field. Who are you? What do you want? But over the years, we've differentiated three, three groups. There's the red line beings, and that's the power game. Now, they've been in contact with governments forever. It's an exchange of technology. They've been around longer, maybe a thousand years longer. So they've got good tech. All of this is ET tech, all our mm. iPhones. That's all ET tech, much ET tech. ET tech that can eliminate all pollution in the world that hasn't been shared yet. Mm. The red line beings, it's about power and resources and wheeling and dealing. So what? It's gone on on earth it's gone on intergalactically it will continue that's what the zone of duality does then you have what we call the green line beings and these are guys who are healing helpful they're the ones who have given governments new tech to eliminate many pollutions and problems in our world they come to the young millennials who are sitting in meditation and have got a, a blueprint for a machine to get rid of plastics in the ocean. Yay, that's happening. Yeah. Now, there's, both of those guys have been in contact with all our global governments. So have the third line, which is the blue line beings. Now, I call them blue because they're the, blue, the beings of love. They're in unity consciousness. They're only interested in operating in a way that's for the highest good. Now, they all started amping up visitation in 1947 after Hiroshima and through the Rosmel time. But the governments weren't interested in the blue line beings because they just said, well, what have you got for us? And they mm -hmm. said, well, we can teach you how to live in harmony and peace and we can take you into unity consciousness. Well, that's not a good power game. So that's mm. not gonna be listened to. So the blue line being started to go to match with the people whose hearts were open themselves to live in unity consciousness and peace. Because if you're not open to it and living it yourself, you can't be the right field of influence for others because you're just sprouting empty words and dogma. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It has to be a real deep experience. So the point is, who do you want to play with? I don't want to play with the red line beings. I don't want to play with the governments. I don't want to do revelation of them and us and the dark forces and look what they're doing now because I've done it for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. <laughs> and that's the game of duality. Yeah. I want to hang out with the healers. I want to hang out with the new tech. I want to hang out with the beings of love. So you set your agenda regarding how you want to operate. And it's not about denial. It's about choice of the mm. wise use of your energy. Yeah. Choose. Yeah. Where do you want to play? What zones you want to live in? It's all available. Well, and this is such an important discussion to me too, because it's like what you're describing is you're aware, you're aware of some of these dark yeah, forces that exist. Course, but it's like, course. I'm not giving them my energy. And that's the, that's the perspective that I think it's so important to come from uh, is that I look at a lot of people in the truther slash consciousness slash health freedom, holistic health space that I tend to attract an audience mm. from. And there are so many people that are so focused on what they are doing, on what they're mm. doing mm. next, on what's going on. And again, I do think it's important to at some level be aware that those things are happening. But, and here's the, here's the, the but. Mm. Um, are we giving it our energy? And this is the reason because they are acutely aware that we are co-creating this reality. Mm. They are acutely mm. aware of that. And if you are so focused, you're giving your energy, your attention, your creative capacity to the things that they're doing, you are helping to bring that about. You are helping you're feeding to, it. You're feeding mm. it. You're continuing you're to manifest that reality. Yeah. 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 
be aware of what you're fertilizing and you fertilize with mental, emotional and physical energy and time. And see, look, I remember, and, and I just want to digress to a little story here. You know, I've been slammed by many forces. You imagine a, a simple woman, I think I was 37 when I went into pranic feeding and the holy ones actually manifested in my bedroom and got me on the global stage, which I was mm. not interested in, and the slamming of that. How dare you come out and say that you haven't eaten for two years? That's impossible, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, people went into this with the wrong motivation. And we had a few people drop physical body because their bodies weren't tuned. They weren't deep enough. They stopped taking physical food, but they weren't. They're in fasting mode. They mm. weren't deep enough into the energy that can feed them in a healthy, safe way. Mm. So at one point, this woman had died in Scotland and I had about 80 million psychic spears aimed to me in my home in Australia. Jasmine is a murderer. She can't do this. She's a fraud. She's deluded. She's killing people. She must be stopped. And the intensity of hate energetically coming to me was so incredible that people couldn't come into my home. They said, mm. what's happened to your ashram? It used oh. to be peaceful and loving and it's filled with, Ugh. and I sat on my bed and I prayed and, but I prayed and said, I'm a Trekkie. I love Star Trek. And <laughs> so I just sat on my bed and I went, I got the vision house, shield yourself. Now I'm done with this energy shield yourself and these energetic blocks and grids rose out of the ground and all of it stopped wow oh. now that's quantum response that is a human being in need who is done playing in a different way and i'm not wanting to be a victim here because of other people's lack of education and limited beliefs to lock out a potential that could be so beneficial for humanity and I get that when we're triggering responses from people and it's negative, then it's my job to educate better. And I'll educate better, but I'm not going to educate by bringing focus continually on what's wrong. I'm going to educate by solution based technology. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's focus on the solution. We know the problems. Yes. Okay, well, the solution is individuals coming back to true nature to come back to an endless source of love within you an endless source of wisdom within you an endless source of benevolence within you an endless source of power within you an endless source of you can shut up and say and do nothing but what you're transmissioning as you walk through this world uplifts everything around you you know, I, can, can I go to another story? Please do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Because, you know, I've been in the field for a long time. So in the beginning, you know, I was deep in meditation one day and I was exhausted, being punched and punched by the media. And, you know, everyone can Google me, go to Wikipedia. It's horrible. So all of this misunderstanding and people's beliefs being challenged and, I remember being at the end of a tour and I was in Amsterdam and I was running a bath and I was exhausted and I was sitting um, waiting for the bath to fill and I went into her heart and I just went, I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to deal with it. It's too big. The, the negativity is too big. The biofeedback's too big. The anger, the hate is too big. I can't, I can't do it. And I felt like a hand came in and grabbed me and pulled me way beyond my body, expanded me like an elevator going up, 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 up. And then I hit a floor and the doors opened and there was a field of light. And standing in the light was this beautiful energy that is like Kuan Yin, the goddess of mercy and compassion. But she was composite. There was like a bit of Mother Mary, Isis, all the goddesses, the loving, the, the compassionate, the nurturing ones, because I needed nurturing, man. I needed to know, you know, something. And she just bowed and I bowed before her and she just ignored me. 
turned around and she started to walk into this field of light. And I knew I had to follow her. And as we walked, we entered a field of Hiroshima nuclear devastation, bomb blasts. It was horrible. The vibration, the suffering, the chaos, the darkness was so intense and she walked through it. But as her feet hit the ground, grass began to grow and flowers began to grow. So I was walking behind her in a field of flowers and grass as her very energy transmission was recalibrating everything around us. And I went, oh my God, whatever she's got, I want it. How is she doing this? And they said, every molecule in creation is, is programmed to respond to pure love. And in the presence of pure love, it will recalibrate itself back to its original pure and perfect nature. Be this love. That was my answer. And I've never forgotten. It's beautiful. I've never, forgotten, I've never forgotten that and I've never forgotten the football field because these are real. These are, this is a, a benevolent consciousness showing you another way to operate. I'd rather operate and I'm not like Kuan Yin. Yeah, that, no, I'm not. I, you know, I'm not walking through transmitting pure, pure love. But my focus is to always transmit the most nourishing frequencies that I can to uplift sentient life all sentient life through all realms and i'll do what's required to do that and it certainly isn't propagating the game of separation and fear mm. that's beautiful well i had some other questions but <laughs> do you i want to respect your time too did you have mm. do you have time for like one or two more so yeah yeah sure what okay. is the time sweetheart <laughs> Uh, it's your time. It would be 10 30. It, okay. 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 So just a couple more. Yeah. One more question at least. So, um, I've talked with other people who are claiming to be breatharian and they talk about receiving nourishment through the sunlight. And what's interesting to me or what piqued my interest is after hearing Dr. Edith's experience in the dark room, I asked mm -hmm. her if she was hungry and she said, no, I wasn't hungry at all. And I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. You haven't eaten in nine days and mm -hmm. you aren't in the sun, you're in pure darkness. So where are you getting mm -hmm. your energy? Could you touch on that? Uh, like how, um, how this process of source feeding works. Yes. Okay, go back, 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 back. We have physical sun, but we have source energy. Source energy is constituted by three frequencies. First, darkness, absolute darkness, the undifferentiated field, the unified field, um, dark matter. But what is the frequency spectrum of that is pure love. From that pure love came the light. From the light came sacred geometric patterning, which is the key codes of creation that even allow us to, you know, everything's sacred in its geometric structure, structure its, its patterns of light. First the love, absolute darkness, then the light. Then when you've got the light flowing, it, it, that light holds wisdom. It holds uh, intelligence. It holds the benevolence. And when you have love and light together, then you have power. So now you're working with the baseline of creation. So we feed from the baseline of creation. Forget physicality, forget the sun, forget the air, forget the high mother nature chi fields. Go to the very baseline of creation, which is vibrating through your molecular atomic structure and is the presence within you and around you of the very nature of creation itself. You go back into the absolute darkness, it's pure love and that pure love you just open and you invite see what's to digress we are told we need physical vitamin c or we will get scurvy that the body doesn't produce it but in the original frequency of pure love because this is the frequency that births universes that supports creation it has every vitamin and mineral within it so why can't it give you breakfast lunch and dinner and vitamin c no pollutions, no chemicals, no modification, no GMO, no Monsanto, nada. 
you are just dropping into something so pure and you are increasing the potency by your day-to-day -day lifestyle. So in Darkroom, we live a very particular eight-point lifestyle that lets us relax more, drop more, back into, into the, the baseline frequency, stimulate it, allow it to be dominant, and we lose hungers. Science. Wow. Okay. Wow. No sun. Because what happens in countries, like we've had the worst storms here in Australia, no sun for days, flooding, oh, terrible, all around the world, climate change. If you're dependent on something outside of yourself to feed yourself, it could be a problem. Mm -hmm. What if you're not dependent on anything outside of you, sunlight either, to feed yourself and you have 100% freedom of choice? If there's food and you want to eat, you do. If you don't want to eat, you don't. Nothing's a problem. In fact, you find experientially that you get stronger and healthier with the less that you have of physical food and the more you have of source energy food you don't need to sleep much your body regenerates it slows down the aging process you know you you're held in a rhythm of emotional food that frees you from any dependence on anything outside of yourself as well your human love relationships change so much because you know that the source of love and the true beloved lives in you and you have no expectations of anyone around you to provide you with emotional food but then you can also love and appreciate them fully for who they mm. are mm. So this is not going to go away. There's going to be people like me or others sharing their different experiences in the field. But I keep saying to people, go back into you. Just open. If this is a reality for you, this life, then let you move into it in a way that's so light and organic and natural and filled with joy and ease and grace. Mm. It doesn't have to be a difficult journey. And even if this isn't for you, at least allow this experience, what Jasmine is sharing, to inspire curiosity and a deeper understanding of what human beings are capable of and what our true essence is. And, you know, I have had many people come to our gatherings because they've had people in their lives spontaneously moving into this and they've wanted to understand because mm -hmm. I meet many people who are just eating less and less and less. They're feeling better and better. But family going, oh, I'm so worried about you. You're, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. well, hang on. Maybe they're moving into source feeding and this is what you need to know about source feeding. Mm -hmm. And it may not be for you, but obviously it's affecting your children. Many of the young children coming in are like this. Mm -hmm. It's good to know. It's really funny you bring that up because I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old. My wife and I have at at times we have that conditioning creep back and we're like, they never want to eat. They never want to eat anything ever. Mm -hmm. And this makes sense. Maybe they're source feeding to some degree. So, Well, look at that, what children eat and then look at the energy they expend, all of them. They're getting mm -hmm. it from somewhere. They're not getting it from calories. Mm -hmm. you know? So they live as source beings. They haven't, they haven't moved into the duality hologram to the degree we have when we've had decades and decades of life in that mm -hmm. hologram. So they're still very pure and they're very deeply connected. Mm -hmm. but i do have to go but thank you um, yeah this was great so thank nice. you so much jasmine <laughs> this was an amazing conversation i appreciate it so much um yeah and for those who are interested in tuning in to more on jasmine please visit jasmine.com and i know it's short notice but you might like to come to dark room in march a couple of weeks we have two in this space so love 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 to see any of you there and just thank you for tuning in and staying with us and listening.